I'm a single parent. The twins get jealous of Miko. She's my favorite child. I have no self-care time and I'm struggling. All narratives that are pushed on me through comparison of other families. I think we get so used to seeing a lot of private moments online that we feel like we are owed someone's entire life. I want to shake things up a little bit and answer these burning questions you have in today's episode on The Gentle Life. Mommy's gonna do it. Oh, come on. Miko. Yeah, you got it. Let's go. Cheese. Let me spit. Alright, you starting to put on clothes? Alright, pretty. You gotta put that, you wanna put that in dirty clothes? Come on. Come on. Put it in here. Put it in the laundry room. Come on. Thank you. In the basket. You put it in a basket? Good job. Turn the light. Good job. Breakfast. Come on. All right, so we're gonna do some oatmeal. I'm gonna stir it. Stop. Careful. Now you gotta stir it. So um, there were a lot of questions that were the same. And so um, um, I'm gonna try and get as many in and kind of lump them together as I can for you guys. What is our go-to form for disciplining Miko? I would not solely consider it discipline i will not discipline miko for things that she doesn't understand okay so i think a lot of the a lot of what i see in the comments are people saying that she is very spoiled and she cries a lot and a lot of that is because she doesn't understand and that kind of lumps in with one of the questions that i actually got about um did I notice or how did I feel when I found out that I was autistic and did I like look back on times growing up where I was like, oh my God, that was a sign right there. Of course, I would not have known being a kid, but there, I cried a lot because I was very, very misunderstood. It was very hard for me to get my words out and I stuttered quite a bit. And my, um, I remember one instance like where my mom, um, was like being like a mediator over me and my cousin and we were having um we had a disagreement or something that happened and i remember that um i was so overwhelmed and so overstimulated that i was trying to explain 
what happened and um and I was I just started crying and 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 I was trying to like get my words out and I remember my mom saying oh I know her when she cries that means she's lying and that made it even more um, frustrating for me and um and I think that from those moments there a lot of the times I can tell that um she doesn't understand I know that she doesn't understand um a lot of things so the things like that I'm not going to discipline it I'm not going to discipline her for for not understanding it um for things like okay Miko it's time to clean your room she shares a room with her older sister with Mackenzie and um I don't I don't allow Mackenzie to pick up her toys or um or to make Miko's bed or to clean up after Miko. But yeah, if she doesn't clean her room, if she's not cleaning her room, well yeah, she's gonna get her computer taken away just like the twins would. Um, she's not gonna get any snacks. Uh, she is going to go sit and she's going to go color or she's going to go have a time to herself, a quiet time to herself. So that's what we do here. Question two, potty training, you guys. Um, very big announcement on potty training. How's potty training going? Miko is, day potty trained you guys she is day potty trained okay one and i kid you not you guys know that we have been working on potty training for the past year not consistently but just more of like you know we will bring it to her attention and we'll try it for a week and we'll try it for like a week or at a time so on and so off like you know and um and one day, you know, she just, instead of me having to say, Miko, do you have to use the bathroom? Let's go to the bathroom. Let's go to the bathroom. After she eats, um, she picked up on it. She picked up on it. Um, I'm absolutely like, I was baffled after the first day. I was like, okay. Like after the first time she asked, she was like, I gotta go to the bot. I gotta go to the potty, and, she, and I'm like, you know, take the diaper off and I'll set her down, and she used the potty, and I'm just like, okay, that's maybe that's a one off, but um, yeah, she is day potty trained. The only thing now, you guys, is that we have to figure out nighttime, and because the day potty training is so new and so fresh, we're gonna stick with that for right now until we figure out how and what we're going to do um, with bedtime. If you guys have been keeping up on our other social media platforms, I um, I co-hosted our webinar with Action Behavior Center, and that um, and that was actually solely about potty training tips for parents and autistic children. So um, I, I will put that link below. You guys can register. It's a free webinar. It comes out August twenty eighth. I'm really excited for you guys to watch it and to get all of the tips that you guys need and not only just for me but from the professionals you guys somebody that works with children of all kinds um all through the spectrum and i think it's going to be very helpful for you guys so i will put that in the description below you guys are going to love that and that actually leads me into the next question when miko was going to start school the one thing that we were kind of waiting on was potty training Okay, so we were already getting her signed up. There's a process for the special education here in Texas, and I'm like, I'm sure there are in other states as well. So there's a process. We are going to get her into school. Um, we have to do a hearing test and an eye test first with the, with the school district. And then once we have that done, then we could submit it with the application where they will then um, schedule a time for an evaluation to see where Miko is and to see what her needs are going to be. Potty training was the biggest thing that was like very concerning for me because she is nonverbal and I don't want her, I don't want anybody taking advantage of her. Um, and I, I really just wanted her to be able to have some type of independence while she's out on her own. As long as we get everything in on time, she should be able to start school January outside support and home health aid um respite i did look into that i had no knowledge of it um prior to a few months ago where someone one of our other subscribers um told me about it i don't think that's something that that we're going to do just yet 
Um, I'm not very comfortable with it. I don't think that we're at a point um, of comfortability to let an outsider like that come in while we're away. Another question that you guys had, um, and it was a kind of like aggressive question that we were kind of getting, um, balancing all three of the children and balancing like the care that we give to each of them. I think that no matter what I say and how I try to justify or try to come up with an excuse that you would think is an excuse or whatever you think, um, I think that you're going to stick with that narrative. What we share on the internet specifically for autism and what goes on in our real life outside of autism because we're not just autistic. We do other things outside of what we show on the internet. I want you guys to know that we, we share family moments with you guys, but we are not a typical family channel. We share our journey and challenges with autism. We balance them very well, to answer your question in short. They're back in school, they're doing really great. They are enjoying being in the fifth grade and um, I love that for them. And so let's I hope they have a really great fifth grade year. I'm gonna lump these two, these last two questions kind of together, like self-care and then a married single parent. And um, that is like one of like the biggest questions when it comes to, um, I think like stay at home moms and like or stay at home parents or you know whatever that is and what you see like um kind of touching on my last video that i posted about being the default or primary parent um which i believe a lot of mothers are i think a lot of moms are i am the default and primary parent but we do parent our children together we do teach them together we do have core values that do align mostly that we try to share with our children to raise them in a way for them to be on their own and to be independent. See me more on the videos uh, or you'll see him like he's holding the camera, he's behind the scenes or if we're out and about, but he's there, but he's not, you know, in the camera. Uh, I don't think that that should be considered that I'm a, um, a married single parent because you don't see him on camera um, so I think that's a very big misconception um, as far as like self-care um, self-care I think that you guys are probably looking at or what I have always idealized what self-care was is like going on a spa date um, getting my nails done going for coffee with friends and and all that kind of stuff and i don't do any of that stuff you guys um i do get my hair done i do get my eyebrows done um and i do go shopping for clothes um occasionally and um i'm not a coffee drinker so i don't go out for coffee i'm not a drinker i don't go out for drinks um, i don't have any of my friends here anymore you guys know that we moved here to texas because my husband got stationed here and so um, a lot of the people that we did know here a lot of the friends and connections that we made those people got pcs elsewhere and so they're they're everywhere now and so we do not know anybody here um so we don't do that um i think more of like my self-care comes in at night where i just kind of have like my alone time and i'm just like you know the kids go to bed and i'm listening to music and i'm like working and i'm just kind of like you know just kind of vibing out like that um did i wish i had more self-care time or like time away from the kids or like time for me and my husband to have our own time away yes absolutely and i think that when you are raising young kids and i think when you're raising autistic kids that support is very limited Okay. And I think a lot of the times that family, even if family was around, not a lot of family cares to learn about autism. Okay, I think that they think that it's more of a um, uh, a struggle or like um, it's too hard for them. And so we don't typically even have family ask us like, you know, um, anything about autism now that i'm kind of thinking about it um my aunt would give me a lot of different advice um 
and different tips about what I could do based on how she raised me because I'm autistic. A lot of the similarities that she noticed with Miko is something that I did and she would give me advice and tell me things that, you know. Um, but aside from her, uh, I've never had a family member ask me anything about autism or, um, yeah, none of that. Um, Matthew is autistic and we found out when he was eight. He's 10 now. Um, I did tell his, so his biological dad is not Chris. The twins have a separate dad. And um, I did tell him and um, he kind of laughed at the idea. He didn't really care and I haven't heard anything about it. You know, he never asked a question. And so, yeah, I don't think a lot of family members outside of people's immediate family, like really care to understand what autism is. Those were all the questions that I had for you guys today. I try to keep it short, try to keep it sweet, but I know it kind of dragged on a little bit because I do want to kind of give background and explain things for all of our new subscribers and as well as our dedicated ones, the ones that have been here since day one. So we appreciate you guys. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you guys for everything and um, until next time.